The early church was made up of almost all Jewish believers who were persecuted for following Jesus. Because their lives had become difficult, many believers began to wonder if following Jesus was worth it. Some may have even thought about giving up on Jesus altogether. The Holy Spirit helped a Christian leader write words of encouragement to the early church in the book of Hebrews. He wrote, Long ago, God spoke to his people through prophets. Now he speaks through Jesus. Jesus is God the Son, and he is like God in every way. Jesus is better than angels because he is God's Son, the eternal King and creator of everything who sits at God's right hand. But Jesus humbled himself to become lower than the angels for a time when he became a man. Jesus became a person like us to die and then rise again. Jesus' work rescues people from sin. All who believe in him become his brothers and sisters. Jesus became like us in every way so he can become a merciful and faithful high priest for us. Because Jesus suffered and was tempted, he is able to help us when we are tempted. This is why Jesus is the greatest. He is greater even than Moses, who was a faithful servant of God. Jesus was an even better servant. God used Moses to bring the law to his people, but God used Jesus to bring the gospel. This is why we cannot turn away from Jesus. Instead, we need to encourage one another each day so that we don't give in to sin. We don't want to be like the Israelites who Moses led out of Egypt and then rebelled against God and perished in the wilderness. The Israelites wanted a land of rest, but even Joshua could not provide rest for God's people. We want to enter into God's rest, and Jesus has provided something even better than land, spiritual rest in him. Because Jesus is such a great high priest for us, we can hold fast to our faith. Jesus knows our weaknesses because he became a human and was tempted, although he never sinned. Because of Jesus, we can approach God with boldness, and God will give us mercy and grace. This is why Jesus is better than anything and why we cannot turn away from him. The first covenant that God provided through Moses has been replaced by a second, better covenant through Jesus. Salvation is found only in Jesus. Jesus is better than anyone and anything. He is the better prophet, the better priest, and the better king. Everyone who trusts in Jesus has salvation from sin through his perfect life, death, and resurrection. Mrs. Williams has been talking about the early church. Is the early church a building? Mm -mm. No, the early church is all the people who are learning and believing about Jesus. So we know that the church is growing and the gospel message read and carried this out, is spreading to everyone. Now we have, you guys, there's a lot of mixed up word games we're gonna play today, so here's what I want you to do. I'm gonna show you, this is one of the people the gospel is spreading to. It's a mixed up word, and when you know the answer, don't shout it out, I just want you to raise your hand. Wait, so it's a person God wants. It's one of the people that the gospel is spreading to. That's the mixed up word. Who are one of the groups of people the gospel message is spreading to? Avonlea? The Jews. That is correct, it is the Jews. I have to wait for Mr. Edom to push the slide for me. Sorry, do you want me to stand over here? You to <laughs> All right, now there is another group that is new to the picture, and the gospel is now spreading to this group of people. We are fallen to this group of people. Um, Caden. It is. It is the Gentiles. You guys are so good. So before we start our lesson today, that was kind of to get you thinking about the gospel spreading. It's spreading to the Jews. It's spreading to the Gentiles. Now think about it. The Jews grew up learning all those Old Testament scriptures. Did the Gentiles grow up learning the same scripture? No. 
No, they didn't. And that's sort of important in today's story, okay? Because we're going to look a little bit at some things in the Old Testament today, even though all of our stories take place in the New Testament that we're studying. But before we start, I'm going to ask you a question. I want you just to think about it in your own head. Do you know someone who is really great at something, something that you would also like to be good at? It could be someone your own age. It could be someone older than you, a friend, a parent. It could also be someone that's maybe famous for something. All right, I'm gonna pick three people to tell me someone they know that's really good at something that they would like to be good at. Read. All right, read. That sounds awesome. So someone that you kind of look up to, right? Okay, Avonlea? Here's my next one. 
is a book, the Guinness Book of World Records. Every year a new book comes out. Yes. What is the Guinness Book of World Records? Who can explain what it is? Mm -hmm. All right, Nina, explain really loud what it is. It's a book of lots of world records. Yeah, and some of the world records are pretty cool, like who runs the fastest, but some of them are like crazy world records, and I have one for you. Oh. Person with the longest hair. <gasps> There was another picture that was almost too creepy. I didn't put it up there, but it was the person with the longest fingernails, and it was oh, this yeah. lady, and they were like this long, and they started curling back around. She could only do one hand because you have to do stuff with the other. All right, next one. Anyone know what those are, Sophia? Oh, the Olympics. Great. And what does the Olympics do, Sophia? What's the whole point of the Olympics? Right. So the whole point of the whole Olympics is from people all around the world in different sports to come compete to decide who is the best person in the world, right? Who is the best swimmer in all of the world? Who is the fastest runner? Who is the best at gymnastics? Who's the best downhill skier? That's another one I like to watch. Uh, who is the fastest swimmer? Yes, there's all different ones and they all come together. Well, that's not like the Olympics, but you're right. Everyone has their own competition. All right, well, there's one more. Yeah, and there's the gymnastics. They're at the podium. If you're the, I love gymnastics. If you are the best, you get the gold medal. And if you come in second, you get the silver. If you come in third, you get the bronze. And then guess what? Everyone who comes in after that, do they get anything? No. No. So you really have to try hard and work hard to be the very best at what you're good at. So today, we are going to talk about some people in the Bible that are really good at something. There are people that we should admire. Now there's a lot of people in the Bible that we should admire, but these specific people are known for something. They're all known for the same thing. They were kind of, we don't want to say competition, but they're all kind of in the same category of something they were good at. And all right, there's the mixed up word for what all these people in the Bible that we're going to talk about today were good at. <laughs> Sophia? Faith. Faith. That's right. All the people in the Bible that we're going to talk about today were known for their faith, and they could be admired for their faith. Now, think about what Mrs. Williams has been teaching us about the early church. First, the Jews, right? Been studying scripture. The Old Testament, the Old Covenant, but now Jesus is here, and Jesus brings the gospel. And then we find out that now the gospel is being shared with the Gentiles, and the new, and the new church is growing and getting more people and more people and more people. And Paul, they're writing all the letters to encourage the churches, just like Barnabas, Mrs. Williams talks about Barnabas, and the churches are growing, and the people are needing lots of encouraging, and the book that we're going to talk, or the chapter we're going to talk about today is Hebrews chapter 11. I can't find that. Oh, it's, Aubrey, I, since I don't have extra hands, just kind of look. It's toward the back. But Hebrews chapter 11 is known as the Hall of Faith because in it talks about a lot of people from the Old Testament that had great faith. Now, you guys are all smart, so I want you to think for a minute. I can't find it. I'm going to okay, say. Aubrey, you're going to have to wait just a minute, okay? You'll have to, I want you to think, it's just Mrs. Edom today. I want you to go ahead and I want you to think now, if you were Paul or someone in the early church and you are trying to encourage new believers, why would you write a whole chapter about people from the Old Testament who had a lot of faith? Why would you write that down? Why do you think that might be important? Avonlea? Yes! That's exactly right! They wanted to say, hey look, here are all these people that have really strong faith. And you can have really strong faith just like them. They were trying to be encouraging. Okay, so we are going to go through, and luckily for you, oh wait, before we do that, oh I forgot to do my fun thing. Okay, we'll go ahead and do my fun thing. So, I want to talk about faith. What is faith? What do you think faith is? You don't have to read exactly what's up there. Nina, what's faith? Faith is um, trusting that, um, trusting that something will happen. Okay. Yeah, and you 
means that faith is trusting that something's going to happen. Anyone else want to add anything? That's right, Nina. Lorelai? Yeah, like a confidence. Julia?
that he would be a great nation. What's the other ones? He would have a lot of descendants and that he would be, live in the land that God was going to give him. In fact, there were as many of Abraham's descendants as stars in the sky and grains of sand along the beach. Every one of these people died, but they still had faith, even though they had not received what had been promised yet. They were glad to just see things from far away, and they agreed they were only strangers on this foreign land of earth. When people talk this way, it is clear that they are looking for a place to call their own. If they had been talking about the land where they had once lived, they could have gone back any time, but they were looking forward to heaven. So this is the author explaining that all the people of the Old Testament were looking forward to, Karen, what was coming. That is why God was not ashamed to call them their, they were not ashamed to call God their God. He even built a city for them. Abraham has been promised, okay, this is the part, that Isaac, his son, would continue his family. But when Abraham was tested, he had faith. See the altar? And was willing to sacrifice Isaac or kill him because he was sure that God could raise people back to life. Did he know how God... Did Abraham know how God was going to save his son? Yeah. No. And he ended up sending what? Uh, no, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, like a goat or a ram in the bushes. And so he didn't have to sacrifice his son. This was just like getting Isaac back from the dead. God sent something else to die instead of Isaac. All right. Now we're going to move on to Isaac. So Isaac, Isaac had faith. And he promised blessing to Jacob and Esau. You remember learning about that lesson? Later, when Jacob was about to die, he leaned on his walking stick and he worshipped. Then, because of his faith, he blessed each of Joseph's sons. And right before Joseph died, he had faith that God would lead the people of Israel out of Egypt. He told them to take his bones out of Egypt when they left with him. So even though he didn't get to see it, did he have faith that God would fulfill his promise? Yeah. Yes. Because Moses, so now we're going to talk about someone else. Because Moses' parents had faith, they kept him hidden until he was three months old. Did you know when Moses' mom and dad decided not to, at the time, the pharaoh, the ruler, like the king, the president of all of Egypt, said that every little Jewish Israelite baby, boy, had to be killed. You had to kill your own child or let them die if you had a little boy. Throw them into the water. Yes, you had to throw them into the river, the Nile River. Moses' parents said, we're not going to do that. Does that take a lot of faith and bravery? Yeah. Yeah, because if someone would have found out what they were doing, what would have happened to them? They would have died. They would have been killed, and they hid him for Three months. His mom must have been so brave. Now, who here has a baby or knows a baby? Okay, I know lots of babies. Is it easy to hide a baby? No. Nope. No. Because babies are loud and they cry. So, was this an easy task for his parents to do? No. No. So, after they hid Moses for three months, they saw that he was a beautiful child, and they were not afraid to disobey the king's orders. And we all know the story, right? They put him in a basket. Who found him? Uh, Pharaoh's daughter. Pharaoh's daughter, that's right. Then, after Moses grew up, his faith made him refuse to be Pharaoh's grandson. Remember, he had grown up living in the palace. He could have had anything he wanted and all the riches in the world. But he chose not to. He chose to be mistreated as a slave with God's people. Instead of having a good time that sin could bring for a little while, Moses knew that the treasures of Egypt were not as wonderful as the treasures he would receive because of God. He looked forward to that reward. Now, did Moses know Jesus? Because Moses is in the Old Testament and Jesus came to life in the New Testament. So were they on earth at the same time? No. No, but Moses had faith in God that God would do what he said. Because of his faith, Moses left Egypt. Moses 
had seen the invisible God. What's that the story of? The burning bush. The burning bush. That's right, where God comes down and talks to him. Which and actually not burn. Right. That's right. Did not burn up. And was not afraid of the king or Pharaoh's anger. He, his faith also made him celebrate Passover. He sprinkled the blood of animals on the doorpost. So the firstborn sons of the people of Israel would not be killed by the destroying angel. Did that take faith of the Israelites? Mm -hmm. It did. Because of their faith, the people walked through the Red Sea on dry land. Who was chasing after them, though? Yeah. Right? The Pharaoh sent his, all of his chariots, all of his soldiers to chase after these men, women, children, babies, babies and their, yeah, and, and animals. Yeah. Could they move as fast as soldiers with chariots and horses? No way. And God opened the sea and let them walk across on dry land. So that took a lot of faith from those people. Can you imagine being you with your family, but in Israel? an Israelite fleeing Egypt and you can see the fair you can see the soldiers coming and you're looking at the water and you're like what are we going to do mom and dad what's the plan and then your mom says let's go start walking would that take a lot of faith even for the kids yep yeah because you would be thinking is this safe like what are we doing oh shit but when the Egyptians tried what happened to them they were drowned God's people had faith, and when they had, this is another story, so we keep switching stories. God's people had faith, and when they had walked around the city of Jericho for seven days, the walls fell down. So let me ask you, Joshua was supposed to go in there and win the battle of Jericho, right? Yeah. Uh, is normally how you win your battle just walking in circles around something? No. Yeah. No, not at all. Right? They were prepared to fight. And instead, God said, nope, don't do that. Just walk in some circles, blow some trumpets. I'll help you out. Did that take a lot of faith? Did yeah. you know? So this is, the, this is the part of the story I always think is interesting. So the walls of Jericho, they weren't, people probably lived in the walls. The walls were super thick. They had rooms in them. It was part of the town. Now imagine you are living in one of the walls of Jericho. And this, all these men show up to what you think is to fight you. And instead, for a whole week, instead, they march around your walls. That's interesting. And every day, you probably go to your window and you're like, there they are again, marching around. Do you think you would be very worried? Not really. No, you'd probably start wondering, what are they doing? What? Like, how is this going to end up? Stupid. Yeah, what is their game plan here? They're well, stupid. yeah, you might think, I don't know. And then, yeah. all of a sudden, all the trumpets blow. And the walls come. Now, there was a lady who lived in those walls, and her name was Rahab. And she had faith, and there were spies that had been sent into the city. And she helped them escape. And so she was not killed when the walls fell. God saved her. Now, does anyone know why that is awesome, that God saved her? She had faith. She could have gotten, she, she didn't have to help the enemy, the Israelites. She didn't have to help them, but she chose to. God told her to, and she listened, and she had faith, and she obeyed, and God saved her life. And somewhere, we see that name Rahab again. Who is she related to? She's related to someone pretty important in the New Testament. Do you know who it is, Aubrey? Jesus. Jesus. Yes. Remember, we've been talking about, like, your great, 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 great Rahab was related to Jesus. Isn't that awesome? She had faith. God saved her life. And even though she never got to meet Jesus, way down years, hundreds of years later, Jesus was part, she's part of Jesus' family. All right. What else can I say? There isn't enough time to tell you about, this is actually what the Bible says. The author says, there isn't even enough time to tell you about Gideon, Barak, Samson, Je Jephthah. David, Samuel, and all the prophets, the faith, their faith helped them conquer kingdoms. And because they did right, God made promises to them. Are they done? Are they done singing? Okay, who do you need? Who do you need? Okay. Bailey, when you guys, if Mrs. Whitecoff comes to get you, 
You can just put your school box back on top, uh, in your box or back on top, yeah, and you can take you. and you can take your papers. All right, the rest of us, we're just gonna keep going though, okay? <laughs> this one. You ready, next one? Yeah. Okay. God closed the jaws of the lions and put out raging fires. He helped them escape from their enemy's swords. And although they were weak, they were given the strength to chase away foreign armies. Some women received their loved ones back from the dead. Many of these people were tortured, but they refused to be released, and they were sure that things would get, they would get a better reward in death than in life. Others were made fun of, are beaten with whips or chains or put in jail, and still others were stoned to death or sawn in two or killed with swords. Some had nothing but sheepskin or goatskin to wear, and they were poor and mistreating and tortured. The world did not deserve these good people who had wandered in the desert or on mountains and had to live in caves and holes in the ground. All of them pleased God because of their faith. But still they died without being given what was promised. This was because God had something better for us in store, and they did not want and they did not want to reach their goals of their faith without us. So God kept going, right? Has God come back to earth yet the second time? No, and so all of us are here, still living here on earth. Okay. Okay, so on the back, when you flip it over, it says something similar to the first side. It says, I admire blank. This time I added the words what? From the Bible. From the Bible. So instead of thinking about someone from your own life that you admire, I want you to think of someone from the Bible. Can it be more yeah. than one? It can be more than one, but it, just pick one for right now. Okay. But you you want to pick two, though. Okay, so you're going to say, I admire maybe like Noah from the Bible because he he built the ark. So you could pick someone from the stories we talked about that you thought, wow, that must have taken a lot of faith. Or you can pick someone that we didn't talk about. Nina, you want to read yours really loud? I might ask her from the Bible because she was brave. Yeah, Esther was really brave. She's another one. Shelby? No. Cliff? I might Peter bit from the Bible because he got the meat. And you know what the funny thing is? Moses didn't feel like he was good at preaching. But God knew he could do it. He had confidence and faith in him. Aubrey? Hey there, I'm Pastor Brian, and 
is time for questions from kids. Piper from Rockford, Illinois asks, How can we believe in something we can't see? That's a great question, Piper. You know, a lot of it is we can't see God. And so it takes faith to believe in Him. Because, as you say, we can't see Him. And it's, it's harder to believe in something we can't see. If, if we can see something, if we can touch something, it's easier to believe in. And so that's why we are called on to have faith. The Bible talks about faith so often. Uh, today's Bible story was the Hall of Faith from Hebrews 11, where we saw person after person who placed faith in God and trusted in Him, even if they didn't know exactly what would happen. So that's a big part of this answer. But there's another big part, and it's this. There is plenty that we can see and experience about God to know He's real. So our faith is not what is called blind faith. We're not just guessing at who God is and what he's like and hoping we're right. We can know we're right because of what we have experienced about God. And you know where we find that? Right here in the Bible. We go to God's word and we can see so much evidence of who he is, what he's done. And we can have faith in him and have confidence that our faith is sound. But also we experience it in our own lives. That God has worked in my life and so I know he's true. I've seen him work. I've seen his effects in my life, which proves that he is true, which strengthens my faith. And I hope the same thing happens for you. So here's a question back for you. How will you put your faith into practice this week? That's the question I want to leave you with today. That's your homework. How are you going to put faith in God this week? You don't have to answer me, but it's something I want you to think about. And if you have an opportunity this week to really feel like, man, I need to put my faith into practice, but I'm nervous, or I don't know if I can do that, I want you to remember some of those people from the Bible that put their faith in the same God that you put your faith in. And I want you to remember the awesome things that God did for them. I want you to have confidence that God can do the same awesome things for you. Isn't that neat to think about? The same God that Moses worshipped, the same God of Joshua and Esther, it's the same God of us today. He's the same.